So let's talk about Swiss meringue. So there's three kinds of meringue, French, Swiss, and Italian. And I'll tell you more about each of those as I'm whisking over the heat, but first, let's get started. So in this bowl, what I have is my egg whites and some meringue powder. If you don't have any meringue powder, don't worry about it. But I've whisked it in and I've let it sit for about five minutes. This is to let the meringue powder hydrate. That's really just dried egg whites. I'm adding it to give a little bit more stability um, to our meringue. But again, if you didn't have meringue powder, this works just fine without it. So egg whites and meringue powder have been sitting for about five minutes. And then I'm gonna add my sugar. So I'm just gonna pour it on top. And I'm just gonna give it all a little whisk together. There we go. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on a bain-marie and we're just going to whisk it until the sugar dissolves. So I wanna put this over simmering water and just whisk it gently. Um, we're not trying to make meringue at this point, but I want it to dissolve all the sugar and come to about 70 or so degrees Celsius. But if you don't have a thermometer, I'll show you soon how to test without. So back to the three kinds of meringue. Italian meringue is egg whites that have a hot sugar syrup streamed into it while it's whipping. Swiss meringue heats the sugar and the egg whites together, and then we whip it. And then French meringue is just egg whites with some sugar streamed in at the end. So French meringue is the least stable of the three, um, and it's not necessarily food safe because we can't guarantee that those egg whites have been pasteurized. Swiss and Italian are both more stable um, Swiss meringue tends to be a little bit denser than Italian meringue. Uh, it contains a little bit more sugar, but they're both heated. So we've created a food safe product. So you wouldn't want to eat raw French meringue, but you could eat unbaked uh, Swiss or Italian meringue. And they're the basis for things like buttercream, um, tart topping, that sort of thing. So you always want to make sure you're making, choosing one that has some cooked egg whites to make sure that we're not making anybody sick. So we're just gonna keep whisking this until the sugar dissolves all the way. And we can test with a thermometer or we can test by putting our finger in and then rolling it around in our hands to see if there's any grains of sugar left behind. You'll feel it start to happen. All of a sudden, this mixture will feel a little less thick and it feels a little bit runnier. So you should be able to put your finger in it and it should sting a little bit. So it's getting warm for me, but it's not quite there yet. So I'm just gonna keep whisking over the heat. I know you can't see it, but all of a sudden I felt it start to get a little bit looser. And that means that the sugar is starting to dissolve. So I'm gonna stick my thermometer in to check, but I'm probably just about there. So again, I'm looking for about 71 degrees Celsius. Good. And I've reached it. I ended up at 73. That'll work. So I'm gonna turn the heat off my water. Give that just another quick whisk while the bowl cools a little bit take my whisk out, and then I'm gonna put it on my machine. You can keep whisking by hand. Just once it's hot, you wanna whisk a little bit firmer. Okay, and I'm gonna turn up the heat. And whenever we're whipping something um, into a foam, so be it whipped cream or egg whites, you want to start slow, okay? So you want to get not lots of little bubbles and then gradually increase the heat or the speed. So you can see I have lots of little bubbles. It looks foamy. So I'm going to go up one. And I'm going to give it 30 to 45 seconds on that speed. And then I'm going to turn it up one more. The reason you want to do that is you want a nice stable foam full of little tiny bubbles 
If I turn this on high right away, it would make really big bubbles, but those are easily burst. So imagine when you were a kid and you used to blow milk bubbles, you know, with a straw. When you blew really slowly, you'd get lots of little tiny bubbles and they would last for a long time. Of course, you'd get bored of that and so you'd blow really hard and you'd get really, really big bubbles, but they would pop. So this is sort of the same idea. We want to do that nice and slowly and then up one more. And we're gonna do that all the way to the top. The other thing that's important to remember about meringue is that it doesn't like fat. If you have a tiny bit of egg yolk or grease in the bowl, your egg whites aren't going to whip. They're always going to stay liquid. They won't hold their stiffness. So you wanna make sure that everything is super, super clean before you start. Clean bowl, um, clean whisk, Everything needs to be clean, and your egg whites in particular need to be clean. If you have a little bit of broken yolk in the white, use an eggshell to fish it out. If there's so much yolk in the white that it's not just a little drop, you need to throw that egg white out, and you need to start over. Okay. Now that it's on the top speed, I'm going to whip it until it comes back to room temperature. So right now it's still very, very hot and I want to whip it until it's cool. So we'll check back on it in a couple minutes. So our meringue's been whipping for probably about 10 minutes. And you can see the bowl's nice and cool. It's come back to room temperature and it's really nice and stiff and it's gonna hold its shape really, really well. So that is Swiss meringue.